everyone. Thanks for watching the Liturgy of the Word for Friday in the third week of Easter. Let's sing Bread of Life. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Friday of the third week of Easter. And today is the feast of St. Joseph, the worker. What a beautiful feast day for us today, given all the incredible unemployment that we're uh, dealing with in our country, in the world today. Um, let's pray in a special way through St. Joseph, the worker, for all those people who are unemployed and all the people who are un underemployed right now, maybe working part-time, before they were working full time. But let's pray for all of them as we begin this Liturgy of the Word today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let's pray through the intercession of St. Joseph, the worker, that each person may once again uh, know the dignity of having meaningful and purposeful work. And let's ask God for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way, Lord, have mercy. You are the truth, Christ, have mercy. You are the life, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O oh God, creator of all things, who laid down for the human race the law of work, graciously grant that by the example of St. Joseph, and under his patronage, we may complete the works you set before us to do and attain, and attain the rewards that you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, that if he should find any men or women who belonged to the way, he might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey, as he was nearing Damascus, a light from the sky suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, Who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. 
Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, for they heard the voice but could see no one. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was unable to see, and he neither ate nor drank. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and ask at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is there praying, and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him, that he may regain his sight. But Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard from many sources about this man what evil things he has done to your holy ones in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to imprison all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for this man is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before Gentiles, kings, and children of Israel. And I will show him what he will have to suffer for my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. Laying his hands on him, he said, Saul, my brother, the Lord has sent me, Jesus, who appeared to you on the way by which you came, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, things like scales fell from his eyes and he regained his sight. He got up and was baptized. And when he had eaten, he recovered his strength. He stayed some days with the disciples in Damascus, and he began at once to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. The Word of the Lord. Go out, go out. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. 
The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is real food, my blood true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. And just as the Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. These things he said while teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, I want to mention three things today, if I may. A first one would be just to remember to pray through the intercession of St. Joseph uh, for the workers. We don't want to forget that at all. And there are special readings, actually, for the Feast of St. Joseph. It's a memorial. And I could have chosen those readings or the readings for the day. And I chose the readings for the day because you just simply can't pass them up. They are so incredibly important and powerful and let's just talk about those, each of them for just a moment here today. The first one, of course, is the conversion of Paul. He tells the story three times in scriptures, his conversion story. It is so critically important to him. And, and I just want to ask you for a moment, what about your story? You're coming to this intimate personal relationship with Jesus. Do you remember that story? And if you do just, just the, make today, a day where you could just think about what happened in that day that happened to me a long, long time ago. I was 24 years old and doing the math, that was 44 years ago. And um, like it was yesterday. I remember it like it was yesterday. Everything, it sort of went on around me at that moment, the, the moment itself. And I mentioned to you before that we were doing this course, which was kind of like the Alpha course. It was called The Edge of Adventure. I don't know if I ever showed you the book. I still have it. 40, it costs six bucks, <laughs> 44 years later. Uh, this is the book, The Edge of Adventure, where this Keith Miller and Bruce Larson are telling the story of their own conversion in, in uh, 12 different chapters. And I remember going back there every single day. Some of you that uh, when we finished Alpha, you would say something like, um, gosh, I don't know what I'm gonna do after this, what am I gonna do on my Wednesday nights or my Monday nights? I felt the same way. When this was over, I wanted to somehow recapture it and put it in a bottle. But anyway, so just remember your conversion experience today. And then uh, in the midst of the gospel here today, there is a line, which is one of the more powerful lines in scripture, where the risen Jesus Christ, and by the way, we should consider this event in, in, in Saul's life to be the same as the appearance of Jesus after the resurrection to the apostles. We should think of it pretty much in the same way. And there's this line where he says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he says, who are you, sir? He says, I'm Jesus of Nazareth, whom you're persecuting. Now, if I could continue the dialogue a little bit, Saul could, if he was bold enough at that moment, which I'm um, doubt he would be, uh, to say, wait a minute, you're dead. I'm not persecuting you. I'm persecuting your church. And I can imagine Jesus saying, bingo, exactly. And in that, you are persecuting me. Let me share with you from the catechism. This is, this is number 795. A couple quotes from three saints about this idea of our being connected to Jesus as is reflected in the gospel here, in the, in the first reading here today. The first one, of course, is from St. Augustine. Seems to always work out that way. He writes, let us rejoice then and give thanks that we have become not only Christians, but Christ himself. Do you understand and grasp, brothers and sisters, God's grace toward you? Marvel and rejoice. We have become Christ. Period. Interesting. Second one from St. Thomas Aquinas. Head and members form, as it were, 
one and the same mystical person. We are that connected to Christ, which he said in the first reading today. Then there's the line from St. Joan of Arc. What an interesting person, about 18, 19 years old. Could you imagine the United States putting an 18, 19 year old illiterate child at the head of the military like the French did with Joan of Arc? Someone in the French betrayed her to the English. The English put her on trial they wanted to kill her uh, and burn her at the stake because she was a witch. And um, they, uh, of course, blasphemed. They, so I want you to imagine, before I get to that part, what, we still have the transcript from the trial, by the way. I want you to imagine these theologians sort of sitting around her. And here's this poor 18-year-old illiterate girl. And they're asking her questions about theology to try to get her to make a mistake so they could say, aha, you are a witch and we're going to burn you at the stake. Well, to make a long story short, they did burn her stake anyway because of false testimony about her. But in this trial, she is asked a question about the church. And this was her answer, which this just goes to show you that it doesn't, you can have all the uh, uh, PhDs you want, but boy, if you are someone who's in touch with Jesus, you sort of just kind of know the answer. But she writes, she said, excuse me, about Jesus Christ and the church. I simply know they are just one thing. We shouldn't complicate the matter. Right between the eyes. Perfect. And this whole thing is, is uh, um, this moves on now to the gospel, if I may, where Jesus says, he who eats my flesh lives in me. Eat my flesh, drink my blood. And, and by the way, the word there for eating is munching, chewing, um, gnawing, actually, is the word. So the, the, uh, John is being incredibly literal about, is nothing, there's, there's, there is absolutely nothing symbolic about this. He's being completely, totally literal that you're eating something. You're eating and drinking. We are talking about the Eucharist here, unequivocally talking about the Eucharist here. And so I just want to share with you a couple quotes that kind of adds to this whole thing of this line from the Acts of the Apostles, that line from the Gospel here today. And this quote's from St. Athanasius where he says, the Son of God became man so we might become God. Didn't say we might become like God. He said we become God. Now one time I shared that at a Christmas Mass. And I was standing kind of where that camera is right now when I was talking, I heard someone say to me, or say that, um, that, he says, that's pantheism. You know, I kind of whispered out loud, that's pantheism. But really it isn't because we still retain our identity. But the interesting thing is, that's Saint Aquinas, doctor of the church, that said that. Here's a quote once again from Saint Thomas Aquinas. The only begotten son of God, wanting to make us shares in his divinity, make us shares in his divinity, assumed our nature so that he might make us gods. We are shares in the divine nature. That's how we can say that the church and Christ are one. That's how we can say, and by the way, this is a process and, and, uh, uh, called deification, which uh, we become deified, we become like God, which is oftentimes talked about in the, um, the Eastern church, the Orthodox church a lot, and many of the mystics talk this way about our relationship with Jesus, that we become so much shares in the divine nature that we become deified. Imagine our dignity, your dignity as a person. You're called to be deified. God bless you. And here's our questions for today. If Jesus is flesh and blood, our true drink, true, true food and true drink, how does that change the way you think about food and drink you consume every single day? Spend some time pondering your conversion, your early and first experience of Jesus. God bless you. It's Friday. I won't be with you tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be uh, working on putting up very soon uh, Mass, of course, for Sunday, uh, which we'll have ready for you uh, for that time. Uh, but God bless you and hope to be with you once again on Monday.